Hey! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I mean, we, we, we were totally talking about prep stuff and mm -hmm. uh, how I needed to get ready for the show, and uh, poof, here we are. <laughs> and then it started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, hello, and welcome to another heaping helping of the steamy, rich goodness that is owlbear soup. <laughs> what? All that steamy. Sunny... I just don't like steamy. The rest of it was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, DJ regular. There's always shenanigans when you get the oh two of us together. Gosh. No, I. What? I mean, like, I, I, I think of stew and soup as like as steamy. Like, I don't want it cold. Oh. We're not Albert Gaspacho. I mean, steamy only reminds me of locker rooms. Like that's that's a locker room adjective. <laughs> and so, <yeah. laughs> and I am joined today by my squeamish guest, uh, host, co-host, other host, other host, <laughs> Richard. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just in my brain. I didn't realize that that was a word that I didn't like until you said it. That's that's wild <laughs> to me. I I know like uh, in some of the uh, some of the streams I was in, and like recently we've been talking about like the words that uh, kind of make us uncomfortable. And in in there's certain age groups that make that that certain words feel more uncomfortable than others. Like our sure. age group, me and you, uh, moist and panties yeah. are both. Uh, both both uh, words that our our generation has trouble with. Uh, I don't understand, uh, but you no, know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we also figured out the new slang is damp. That's damp. That's that's just a true adjective, right? Yeah, but it but means po a positive thing now. So. Oh, okay, cool. Like All that's right. dope. It's damp. That. That's what the kids are saying, I guess. Interesting. I don't know. Who wow. Knows? <laughs> Oh man! I'm so out of it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's weird. It's weird. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, we are getting ready for spooky season. Spooky season starts mm -hmm. on Wednesday, September first. Uh, <laughs> it would have started August first, but uh, you know, I wasn't ready for spooky season. So uh, that's next... a quick start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm ready. I've uh, we uh, we made we we made some plans. Uh, <laughs> we we made some plans to uh, have a have a few vaccinated folks over for some you know uh, punch and uh, treats, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm very excited. Also, I want a twelve foot tall <laughs> skeleton, but Aubrey told me I shouldn't buy it. But that makes me want to buy it more. But don't tell her. Is this is this the Home Depot skeleton? The Home Depot skeleton. <laughs> There's Facebook groups about this skeleton. I am so excited about the existence of this twelve foot tall skeleton. Uh, I could I could really right. use a twelve foot tall There's skeleton a... in my life. Yeah, I just like it. The idea of it resting against your garage or something. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll put it in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll put it on the roof. Oh man, <clears throat> gotcha. Uh, like trying to climb over the house. Yeah. With one right? arm extended. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. That would be rad. Like if it was like, you know, over just the, the, the peak of the house. Yes. Yes. I love it. I, oh, my gosh. That was great. Um, like I was saying before, your, your voice kind of doubles sometimes, just sometimes. And it was in there for the like, it's going to be rad. Oh, no. <laughs> made, me, made me real happy. <laughs> I'm going to try one more thing to adjust my mic because uh, it's doubling on occasion. All right. Can you hear me? I can. I can. All right. Cool. Perfect. All right. Well, you we'll are. Am I doubling? You are in stereo for me. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> uh, am I in too many skeletons? Am I doubling out there for the audience? Well, anyway, they can answer that later. Hopefully, it's not too annoying. Oh. You have faded back to normal. <laughs> all right. Well, I like being normal, so let's stick with normal. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, Aubrey. Aubrey mentioned in the chat. I was. I wasn't sure if she was going to be here. Uh, we do, in fact, have <laughs> uh, too many skeletons. Uh, we did, in fact, buy like eight last year or something. So. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, well, also, so, thanks everyone. So in the can chat. you can you piece them together into one like mega skeleton? <laughs> I love this idea. I'm so excited about this <laughs> idea. My so my my initial idea was just to like take all the skeletons and just like haphazardly throw them in the front yard 
and just leave them there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I also like, also, I, we talked about raver uh, skeletons before, too. Uh -oh. uh -huh. What was this? Oh, you're, 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 I've got you doubling up wildly. You're on, you're on the, like an echo delay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you sound great for us. Maybe it's just me. I'll yeah. just live with it. No, okay. no, let's keep going. All right. I'll, I'll get over it. Watch. We're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, chat, let me know if it gets too wild, and then I will try some more troubleshooting. Uh, ooh, yes. A skeleton That's, megazord. Yes. Speaking what of megazords. You... <laughs> what if you had this this entire ridiculous skeleton and you just had a single sign that was like, what if you looked at Megazord with uh, X-ray vision? <laughs> oh, I love it. But see, then, then, but then I need to, oh, no. No, because we're, we're putting them together and I'll form the head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how that works? All right. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, man. Uh, well, what kind of gaming have you done this past week? My goodness, I have not played um, a whole lot of, of games at all. This is kind of my last week of preparation for the Academy. So I'm working on the adventure that I'm going to be playing with them, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, it's going to all revolve around this, this town that has been cursed. Um, in every way possible, like the, uh, the 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 cows, all the dairy cows. There's no milk. All the grains, for some reason, they're they're growing in this way that there's there's no actual grain, right? All their food is is going bad. People keep falling over, you know, tripping. There's banana peels everywhere. Um, it's just the worst. And uh, and they think that they've been cursed by the goddess of luck. And the uh, kids will have to go and investigate that. So oh, I'm pretty wow. excited. Yeah. Um, I'm deciding if I'm going to add any mechanics that mess with their die rolls or if I want to leave that out because, it, you know, that can that can make people a little upset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I so mean, that's fun. so long as they can mess back. Right. I, I, I think right. that that has to be the rule. Like if if, <laughs> if they can mess with your you can mess with their dice rolls, they're allowed to mess with yours on occasion. Right. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. If, if they have a divination wizard, then definitely. With yeah. that port sensibility, oh my oh, gosh! Oh my goodness, <laughs> I I uh, I saw a really wild build all around it, around port. Oh my god, um, it, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um, yes, so that's going on, and then of course, uh, as you know, and not not the public, uh, I'm working on my first D and D campaign in like three years. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I, I do know, um, and I'm. Uh, I already started plotting characters. I know nothing about the setting, but I have like so many ideas. Good, and the, none of the them will setting. Work. The setting will be important. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna start our session zero. I'm very excited for that, and we'll we'll get to report back on on how that's all going. I'm I mean, that excited. sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. On my end of gaming things, and I I know you have also done this. Uh, Mm -hmm. The latest season of Destiny has rolled out, and friends, uh, as much of a tabletop gamer as I am, I had to spend a lot of time playing Destiny. Right, really, the games that I play the most right now, Holy. I'm I'm playing uh, Destiny a lot, and then I play uh, Team Fight Tactics way too much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then I've been playing, um, of course, Magic: The Gathering Arena, which is still fantastic. I'm waiting for the next rotation. I like to draft. I like drafting, so I'm waiting for the next rotation. Um, uh, you know, pretty good. So, yeah. Oh man, it looks like there's a a reminder in the chat. Let's talk. Uh, let's mention this real quick. Uh, hey, we are going to have a Gen Con show, and we're working That's out right. the details of it now. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna have some guests, and there's gonna be some adventure building, and it's gonna be great. And you should join us uh, if you want to yes. know more. You know, uh, just look up Saving Throw on um, the search i did flash the uh url on the screen so yeah come hang out with us i should make a short Absolutely. i should make a short url for that maybe i will <laughs> um, it's gonna be really fun i'm really excited for that um just because i love building adventures and so we get yeah. a whole you know get a few people on board and uh things can go pretty wild yeah uh yeah so yeah my gaming has been pretty pretty relegated to video games um Though I am looking forward to uh, playing some more of the uh, uh, Power Rangers deck builder game. Um, we are yeah yeah we're we're going out to, um, to visit my family at the end of September to 
just go visit. So I'm going to bring that game with me. And my brother uh, is the person who I grew up watching Power Rangers with. So I'm pretty excited to show him that game. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. We uh, That's really great. And especially because we have more Power Rangers news to come today. Um, what? That will maybe something else you'll have to bring along. Yeah, I guess visit. so. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, yeah. should, should we get into the news? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I feel ready. I feel prepared. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to start out uh, kind of touching base on something that we've been reporting on over the past few weeks, and this is supply chain issues. Uh, DC mm -hmm. has also been affected. Now, you know, we, we're, we're talking big companies with big backings. You know, we, 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 we've gotten some information from various game companies. Now, this is a much bigger company than I than a lot of the gaming companies we've heard these these woes from. Uh, but, you know, because of this, there's something like 35 uh, comics that are being delayed. Uh, next month due to the, you know, all these COVID related port closures and freight delays and workforce shortages. Um, it, it, it's even, they've even uh, severely uh, limited the allocation of paper supply. So this, this, this yeah. pandemic is affecting us in every way possible. So if you are, you know, like me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, reading comics all the time so you know i just need to know that you know the next episode of our uh, next uh issue of static and green lantern and suicide squad and these other things that i read every month are going to be delayed and that's and right. that's okay they're doing they're doing what they have to do during this pandemic but this is something to think about when you're when you're pre-ordering your games especially kickstarter we're going to talk about some kickstarters expect shipping delays at least for the next i would say year two years probably um, we're, we're going to be affected by this for a while. Even if tomorrow yeah. COVID was gone, we would still be affected by the, by these, these shortages and issues for a while. So, you know, make sure to mask up, stay safe, get vaccinated, do all the things you can and we'll get through this and we'll get our comics right. and we'll get our games. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I have a little bit more about something we talked about last time as well. Oh. Um, which is from Gamma, uh, right from the top. The uh, Game Manufacturers Association is is the loose organization that uh, the people join, uh, gets, uh, I mean, all sorts of stuff going on with the, the Gamma conference and convention. Um, it's, it's kind of like an oversight group, I guess, over the games industry. Um, no, no, like, you know, guiding principles for the most part, right? Um, but they came out very, very quickly and very strongly. Uh, they've, they've been trying to make some changes over the course of the last year. There's been a lot of calls that the, the group is kind of like a, a board, kind of a, you know, an old boys mentality sort of thing. Um, but they've been making changes. And one of the big changes that they made very recently on the 19th is taking a look at uh, the information that we have about the, the broken token and just saying, look, we are making sure that uh, we have an industry code of conduct um, that organizations will have to abide by to be part of our association and it will be part of their 2022 membership process. Oh, wow. So I am excited that, that they are, are getting into it and really saying like, this is what we expect from uh, the board game industry in general. I mean, that is not a blanket statement that many people are in a position to make, but Gamma certainly is. Right. So yeah, uh, good for them. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens there. Awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, talk, so Gamma, they do do their trade show and there's a lot of conventions that are going on. A lot of them are also affected by COVID. You know, it's it's COVID news all the time. Uh, all the so, time. All the time. <laughs> so Plat Hat Games, uh, they have released uh, their updates to schedules. Uh, not all great news. Um, they are exiting uh, Gen Con and Origins 2021 due to the uh, in increased rate of COVID-19 with the Delta variant and the other variants kind of making waves. Uh, even though they're not going to be at Gen Con, they will still uh, do be running free Summoner Wars online tournaments during Gen Con. So you could sign up though, uh, uh, sign up for those online. Uh, deadline is today. So if you want to get into that, you need to get over there. Uh, right. Also, you know, AshCon 2021 is uh, kind of it's an online convention, their own thing uh, that they're putting together. And this is specifically for folks who uh, wanted to play Ashes, which is which is one of their games that has a officially supported organized play. So you'll be able to play online um, and the signups are on their site and through their discord. So go ahead and check uh, Plat Hat Games if you're a gamer there. And because they're not going to be at Gen Con, uh, a lot of their Gen Con deals will be running on the web store between the 15th and the 19th. Uh, and I have to say, uh, the the Summoner Wars pin 
is pretty fantastic. And I might have to remember to pop over here and go <laughs> grab that. Very cool. Yeah. And then, of course, they'll be streaming on Twitch during Gen Con. So you'll be able to see some Summon Wars, some Ashes Reborn battles, uh, that kind of stuff. That's awesome. I was just thinking to myself that I, I'm excited to see some of these conventions online. Um, because I do it from the comfort of my home. The sad part is, of course, that discovery of something brand new over there that mm -hmm. you get at a convention. You know, yeah, we'll do the best we can right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good, yeah. good work. Uh, Summoner Wars. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, moving on to uh, stuff that has come out of the pandemic. Uh, people were still creating uh all sorts of things. And today I want to check in on uh, the latest output by Renegade Games um, because they have created a new role-playing system that they call Essence 20. And they recently announced three licensed games that they're going to be putting out um, in 2022, I believe. Um, those three are going to be G.I. Joe, Transformers, and the Power Rangers. So, so they only need Ninja Turtles and they have my entire childhood? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> right um it's uh it's really interesting i i'm liking what they're they're doing with the system we don't know a ton about it just yet uh i have some basic concepts um but uh but there's there's a lot of similarities between these three systems right i mean all three of these shows involve members of a team right these are not solo episodes mm -hmm. right uh, and a big part of all three of them is kind of how they work together. And it sounds like that is intended in this system. That, uh, that part of character design is how do you, how are you part of the team? Like, yes, who are you? Cool. But also, how are you part of this team that's around us? Which I think is really important and missing from a lot of role-playing games. <laughs> um, yeah. Especially if we're, you know, basing it on this huge team structure. Um, I do know, the other thing that I do know is the core mechanic of the game. So we've been talking about the 2d20 system recently, yeah. which was a lot of fun, also licensed in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, this one is going to be rolling a d20, um, and then based on how skilled you are at something, you will have a die attached to it, ranging from a d2 all the way up to a d20. Okay. Um, and you're going to take the, D the D20 that you get and roll your skill die, um, add them together to see what you get. Um, in an interview, um, Elisa Teague, who is our uh, Renegade's like role-playing game designer in chief, um, mentioned that there's also gonna be some kind of a ladder mechanic uh, where if you have specialized in a skill, say that you have a D8 in that skill, but you're specialized, well, cool. Not only do you roll the D20 and the D8, but no, you also pick up the D6 and the D4 and the D2, and you grab all of those dice and you roll all of them. You keep your D20 and you take the highest results among any of the skill dice, you add them together. Um, so better chances of getting big results. And anytime any of your dice shows a maximum value, it is a critical success and wacky stuff is gonna happen. So lots of dice, which is fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I just like it. I like throwing around a lot of dice, and we don't get to do that very often. You know, plus reasonable ways to to incorporate all the weird polyhedral dice instead of just the d20. So right, and with it, and with a d2, you have a fifty percent chance of critting every time. So always do your right? crappy skills. I mean, I didn't expect to see a d2 on this list. Yeah, <laughs> but here we are. Um, the other big thing that they're talking about is if you think about those three. Um, properties uh characters don't die in them so oh. they've decided you don't die in this system you just don't um there is no lethal damage um you get knocked out of play and there are consequences for that but your character doesn't die See, so Optimus prime died duke died well um, well but those are those are critical story moments not just because you you know went to a basement and there were some rats in it right oh, yeah okay <laughs> so all right all right <laughs> that's valid. not yeah, that's not because of damage. <laughs> so I think James, it's a really cool I, idea. Tommy um, died at one point in the Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, so Tommy, uh, Jason. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow. Did, did I derail you? Did I de sufficiently derail you? you? Totally did. I was immediately like, Jimmy, t t Timmy, t Tesla. <laughs> what's who are who are the Power Rangers? I have no idea. <laughs> oh man, uh, you know I. I love me some RPGs and interesting ways of playing them. And uh, I guess I guess uh, what I want to talk about next is uh, Rich dying on us. 
Uh, when he comes back, we'll uh, we'll check in with him, make sure he's okay. But in the meantime, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start talking about the D&D class and subclass of survey that's presented on Wizards. Um, their, their surveys are... Oh, Rich is good. Their surveys are not great. I, I, I know this. Um, they are long. They are, they are dumb. Uh, but you want to make sure and, and, and get your voice heard with the future of this property. Otherwise, it's going to turn, you know, into some game that a small percentage of people like, right? Um, sure. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's going to turn into, uh, you know, Pathfinder 3. So let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's, let's go survey fill it out, be part of the community, uh, make D&D better by joining in. That survey is very long. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I, I I hate how long their surveys are. Yeah. I hate it so much. It, it, <laughs> so I work in marketing. Anytime, the, the the more form fill or, you know, the more areas you have to fill out on a form, the more drop off you're going to get from, from users. Um, right. So, you know, when you have 16, 20 pages of questions, you have to consider that the amount of users who start that and finish it are mm -hmm. are very different. Um, oh, you're, yeah. You're going to lose maybe with how long that is. And, and this is why I'm saying, like, stick with it. Uh, how long that survey is. I would say of the people who start it, I don't know, 20% maybe finish it, maybe 30. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Great. So I, I totally recommend if you are worried about it being too long, um, the, the biggest thing in there is they want information about classes. Like, just pick one. Pick the class that is your favorite class if you want to give feedback on that one. Yeah. Choose a couple subclasses. You're going to have, you know, some places for some narrative input, a bunch of questions about those subclasses in particular, all of their abilities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Don't don't go in with, with huge eyes. Don't do everything. <laughs> You'll yeah. be there for a very long time. <laughs> But do make sure you get to the very end and hit finish yes. and submit and all yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, now that you're done coughing up along, what you got? Oh, my gosh. Uh, remarkably, uh, I have to talk about uh, a very weird thing that happened this week. Um, is that I don't know why. I don't know why these things catch my attention. But Arby's came out with a set of very specifically D&D &D dice. They have the, the polyhedral set. They are these clear dice that uh the the 20 is an arby's symbol like the hat and the, the logo so cool. uh, it's uh it's very strange <laughs> right i i um, i want some but i one <laughs> one there's not i guess i could eat fries at arby's okay so there's one thing i can eat there <laughs> <laughs> it, right. It's, it's hard for a vegetarian or vegan mm -hmm. to go to a roast beef sandwich place mm -hmm. and find something to eat so that they can buy the dice. Uh, and yeah. you, I believe you were saying they were sold out already. They're totally sold out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, People were really excited about them. They are these very, like, I, I, I don't even know that if I were to, to describe what the dice look like, they're kind of clear. So maybe if there was, if you had like a cup of Sprite, but you had ice cubes, but the ice cubes floating around were like made with black food coloring. That's kind of what these dice look like. <laughs> and then nice. Arby's, um, just so super weird. weird. It's so weird. Um, uh, I, I can't, I can't eat Arby's. I just couldn't. When I was a, a the weirdest story, uh, when I was a kid, I, I, kept trying to hide one of these sandwiches like under a napkin, like under the, the tray, wherever I could so I wouldn't have to eat it because it was just, uh, ugh. Um, and uh, my my parents kept catching me. They were like, no, you've got to eat that. We came here. you got to eat the whole thing. Um, I ended up hiding it in my shoe, like under my foot, and I just kind of, because <laughs> they kept finding it. Uh, it was the worst. It was the worst. And I had to like walk over to the bathroom and then throw it away, and they watched me. They were like... <laughs> <laughs> I will say Arby's is one of the fast foods that I miss. I, I used to love their oh. crappy roast beef sandwiches and I love the curly fries. Um, but you know what? Let's get away from that. I don't eat meat anymore and you don't eat Arby's. <laughs> yeah, right? So, no. uh, but you know what we do do is we drink adult beverages. Um, and so, you know, in a twist, you, you Arby brings you dice. Uh, Catan brings you beer. Uh, so with the, with a partnership with the, um, what is it? Champion Beverage Club. Uh, they are going to create an official Catan beer. So through their subscription service, uh, which has a fee of like 50 bucks, uh, you will get um, 
a, a wide variety of lagers and ales. Included in that are six Catan beers, each one meant to represent a different biome found in the tabletop game. So, uh, you know, that's clearly it's a wheat beer for fields, a rye <laughs> beer for pastures, uh, a Schwarz uh, Bayer, uh, uh, trying to say it with a German accent because I spelt it that way, Bayer, uh, for mountains and, and, and you know, and, and so on and so forth. Um, it's wow. wild. I mean, <laughs> who wants Catan beer, right? That's really interesting. So like, I wonder if it's mediocre like the game. Ouch. Okay. We still need to play some cities and nights, right? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, right, because we've got um, Will Wheaton's partnership, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got, uh, what's the other one? Um, Gen Con has their own beer, right? But I don't actually know many games yeah. that <laughs> have a beer all on their own. So five, that's pretty great. Pretty yeah. wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Denver Comic Con does this interesting thing. And I, I, I don't know if you've ever gone to Denver Comic Con with us. No. Um, Denver Comic Con does this interesting thing where they, um, they, they, they work with the local breweries and they pick one of the local breweries <laughs> who makes a beer for the convention that year. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, like one year it was the Caped Crusader and, you know, and, and things like that. And it's, and I think that's a, a ton of fun, especially for a beer town. Like, I don't, I, I yeah. don't know why we don't do it here, here in the Portland area. It seems to make sense for Rose City Comic Con, but yeah, uh, you know, yeah. but the Denver Comic Con. They do they do a a beer for the con, which I think is is so smart in it. Like Denver is such a beer town. Like yeah, so that's a cool idea. Yeah, uh, I've never played Catan. I have no dog in this hunt. I'll... <laughs> Cities and Nights is so good. It's so good. <laughs> I I think Catan is a fantastic gateway game to get gamers into more Euro style gaming. Um, yes, I don't like the barter system of games. I don't like those those kinds of games. Those don't yeah. work well with me. So I will. I I like throwing Catan under the bus. I recognize it's a good game, uh, but I but it's kind of like dwarves in D and D. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just so you know if you if you didn't already, game theory says that the way to win at Catan is never to trade with any other human being. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it just says skip it. <laughs> you, you know You're... how to you know how to win bluffing games. Don't lie. Yeah. Uh, I've had those games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't lie. Don't lie. Just do exactly what you said you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Thus, I don't play very many bluffing games either. Fair enough. <laughs> oh man. Well. Oh my gosh. What do you got to follow up um, here? Because I mean, I believe that's the new story of the week. Oh, I've got so many role playing things to start taking a look at. Of course, um, I wanted to to start by looking over at uh, Ian World, um, which is is a website that's lasted for a very long time in a number of iterations. Of course, uh, whether we we like it or we hate it, um, it's certainly here, and um, they've focused a lot recently. Like I think I've talked about their their. Uh, what do they call them? Mini starters? These Kickstarters that last for just like a week or two, just for a mm -hmm. small project. Um, and they've, they've kind of used this design principle to get them moving and moving and moving towards their next project, which is coming out pretty quickly, I think, um, called Level Up. Uh, it is an advanced fifth edition take, um, kind of using the rules that already exist and just upgrading them and updating them in a whole lot of different ways. Um, I'm very interested to see what they do with this because they, they're saying that certainly they are, are taking a new look at, you know, heritages and cultures for, for all sorts of uh, characters, um, new character motivations, goals, destinies that, that change how inspiration works, um, adding a marshal. Game needs a dang marshal, so good. Uh, new ranger without spells, focusing on the wilderness. Um, 35 new archetypes for each class. I mean, just tons and tons of like player-focused things. Um, but they've also talked a lot about how they are trying to upgrade and change the game so that there's more rules and interactions for exploration and role-playing, um, discovery, like all the sorts of things that make the game tick. Um, and after playing this game for, for so long, they're just... Just going out there, getting all all sorts of of things in here. So I'm pretty excited to see someone's take on um, a 5.5, basically, yeah. which is what what they're looking at. <laughs> yeah, I I'm I'm definitely interested. Um, mm -hmm. I just I I worry that they are, you know. So I was a big fourth edition person, so 
uh, Ian World was the place filled of hate and vitriol for me. Yes. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I love fourth edition. I was all over the forums. You could have, you know, you can look in the Wayback Machine and find bajillions of posts from me. Um, so Ian World always felt like a a place to go if I wanted to uh, get my feelings hurt or my heart stomped on. Um, I don't know if it's improved, but it, it left a sour taste in my mouth. Sure. So, so with all that said, I worry that they are going they're not going to take the lessons that Wizards of the Coast learned between 4th edition and 5th edition and they're going to revert back to a more 3.0 3.5 variation right. of 5th edition. So, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, and that's my fear is is that, you know, yeah. I'm going to check it out. Um I still have hard feelings towards the end world and their community, but that's me. They could release a fantastic mm -hmm. product. Um, and I want to check it out. So yeah. it's so interesting. It was a site I checked because I, I knew Eric Noah, like as the site was launching way, way, yeah. way back. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't even look at the site during fourth ed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, no. yeah, I, it was making the rounds during that time period and I played it's fourth. Monsters. There was, there was long periods of times where I was playing four or five games a week. So I was, I was definitely wow. playing a lot of fourth ed. Nice. Well, Speaking of, of, of Paizo <laughs> and, and, and things that, that cause conflicts in, in, in gaming. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Uh, <laughs> Pathfinder, pa Paizo and Pathfinder are great. Pathfinder 2 has some, a, a cool new end of summer playtest coming. So immediately after Gen Con, they're going to be releasing new, two new classes for you to build characters with and playtest. Uh, the playtest is going to run between September 20th and October 26th. Uh, there is a lot of people trying to guess what these two are going huh? to be. Um, I, <laughs> I feel like the strongest ones right now are probably a cavalier style. I saw that one up there, right? Someone, yeah. someone a mounted mm -hmm. style. Um, and then maybe more of a, like, um, I like the warlord tactician style of class that somebody was mentioning. I was like, yeah, that would be kind of cool. But there's right. some notes of Book of the Dead is coming, which, as we all know, that's the oh, end yeah. of, that's the end of a uh, of of a of a campaign setting is when you get to your Book of Vile Darkness. Um, maybe if maybe a necromancer <laughs> could be could be yeah. So. right. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> I gotta uh, think about that. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of interested in seeing where this goes. I like I like building characters in in uh, second edition of. Uh, Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. It it feels like a game on its own. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do a good job. Good job with that. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on that. Very cool. Uh, well, my next one is is a book that has recently come out for D&D specifically. Um, and this is one that has been uh, talked about for some time, although it's just live, I think, the last couple of days. Um, this is uh, by Adam Hancock and a, a solid team of folks, uh, a game called Those Who Wander. Um, it's available on Drive-Thru RPG right now, although there was a Kickstarter for it in the first place, and we may have mentioned it back then. Um, it is a dynamic fifth ed alternate um, game system for exponentially growing character paths, creating like diverse and versatile uh, characters, unique parentages, uh, awakening heirlooms, mechanically defining character backgrounds, all sorts of stuff. Um, this, uh, this basically kind of changes all of that character creation stuff that we kind of know from fifth ed and turns it almost into like a flow chart, right? Hmm. Maybe you'll head over this way and that'll give you you know, two options and you pick one of those and that'll give you two other options and that'll give you, right. So you, you head down this branching pathway, um, which is where the, those who wander thing kind of comes yeah. from. Um, which I think is really fun. That reminds me a lot of video games. Um, so, so that's fantastic. Um, one of the biggest things they did is they just decided to just upend how ancestry works in general. Um, in this system, they uh, they ask you to take a look at two uh, two parents um, gaining a couple uh, inherited innate traits, but also like a lot of learned traits, like a big focus on making a distinction between um, what ancestry and culture might mean. Uh, they do it in kind of an intriguing way. Um, nice. This is a pretty massive book. There's a lot of a lot, a lot of options in here. Um, and one of the things they really wanted to do as well is make sure that uh, that 
you get tons of choices, right? So there should be stuff that you get to do in the game um, as you not just create a character, but progress your character throughout the story. Nice. So highly recommended. Um, seems like a very fun thing. <clears throat> well, Rich, you taunted me with a humble bundle last week uh, talking about Starfinder. And uh, <laughs> I love Starfinder. And fortunately, I already had all of those books. But, oh. <laughs> you know, I I know how you loved Pathfinder in, in that style of gaming. And mm -hmm. I love fourth edition. So the game that we could probably play together is 13th Age, which is currently yeah. a humble bundle game right now. Uh, if you pay 25 bucks, you get a 37 item bundle, including the core rulebook, uh, including, you know, the character bundles, <laughs> you know, including adventures, including uh maps including all kinds of resources it's it's so so much good 13th age stuff uh wow i love 13th age there there is one aspect of 13th age that i love more than anything and that is the escalation die uh yeah for folks who aren't familiar you just you find the biggest d6 you can it's important that it's a big d6 it has to be big everybody at the table has to be able to read it so you get right. one like this big and you put it on the table and after a, end of each combat round you flip it and everybody adds that die to their attack and damage. Yep. Awesome. You know, combat goes faster. <laughs> it does. Yeah. And, 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 it, and because of that die, you get to like, as the combat gets later too, you get to do some of that cooler stuff that you don't normally get a chance to do. So, you know, you want to do that thing where, oh, well, normally if you had done it, you would have had minus four, but escalation dies at plus six overall plus two on that. Might as well do it. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that bonus also means like maybe you save your big things for a little bit like, oh, I, you know, that guiding bolt, if it misses, it's a total wasted turn. But if I wait until like the third turn. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll yeah. Take an but, extra plus ooh, three. Fifteen yeah. percent extra chance of hitting. Pff, yes, mm -hmm. please. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Thirteenth age is fantastic. I would love to play more thirteenth age. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Check I, it out. I think I, I think I only played it one time, honestly, which I'm uh, um, sad about. But the other thing I remember is the one unique thing. Oh, right? yeah. The one unique thing is so good. I love it's, that. Yeah. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. yeah. Yeah. So the one unique thing is is a it's, it's one unique thing about you. It doesn't really have any mechanical benefit, but it's it's something that stands out about you because you are a hero. You are above and beyond the rest. So my instance um, I had a half orc, uh, was one of my characters, and his right eye glowed green. And because of its eerie glow, that's the eye that he had his dark vision in, you know. So during the day when he was out adventuring, he'd wear an eye patch to cover it up because it was weird mm -hmm. and creepy. Uh, also, didn't need his dark vision. <laughs> so whenever he was in dungeon, sure. he would flip up the eye patch and be able to see just fine. But yeah, anyway, that was that was my one thing. I think I, I think I hit hit the 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 one unique thing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think it's a cool idea to take like I want to write a unique backstory and kind of like funnel it down to this thing that's going to come up again and again. Yeah, <laughs> very smart. <laughs> uh oh, Death's chokehold wow. figured me out. <laughs> oh, like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That Indeed. is absolutely what I was thinking of whenever I uh, <laughs> I made that character. <laughs> All right. What <laughs> well, else let's you got? see. I think either one of these systems um, could use a little bit more. Um, I don't know, some plants maybe. <laughs> um, up on Kickstarter right now, there is the Herbalist's Primer, which is going to be a hardback book, an illustrated guide to real world magical plants for magicians, world builders, alchemists, and game masters. Um, I believe that this product is trying to fill a massive void in D and D right specifically, right. You have, you have druids who can talk to plants. Okay. Um, you have poisons that come from plants. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't really get like descriptions about where they come from or what the antidotes are, or like all these different ways that, that we could make them more useful if we knew a little bit more. And it's cause that kind of lore is just expansive and hard to write. Mm -hmm. Um, so these folks did it. <laughs> they, yeah. This is a full color hardcover, 360 page book, a wow. um, hundred different de detailed illustrations of different magically inclined plants. Um, 
from I mean from our world, you're going to see you, you're going to see aconite, you're going to see all of these these plants that that we know from, you know, a hundred years to a hundred uh, thousand. How long has alchemy been going? Two thousand years ago, right? <laughs> um, oh my gosh, it just seems like a really cool thing, and and you know they they're not saying that there's a ton of mechanics here. It's a lore book, yeah. Uh, because it's a lore book, you can use it for fifth ed. You can use it for thirteenth age. You could use it for, I mean, shadow run if you wanted to, <laughs> right? Give your shadow run wizard actually something cool to do, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I I play wizards in every system and yeah, shadow run. <laughs> yeah, shadow run. When you're a low level wizard, not great. Whenever you got some awesome. experience behind you, then you start getting a little bit better. But yeah, oh man. Um, <laughs> oh, Shadowrun wizards. Uh, Shadowrun wizards. Yeah, you need a shotgun when you're a Shadowrun wizard. I mean, yeah, something's yeah. going to get close to you and you need to not miss. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, Teos, uh, get, get often frequent guests of the show, Teos Abadia. He, uh, I believe he worked on the great netbook of uh, flora and fauna for Dark Sun. Uh, because oh, really, okay. yeah, because that was kind of his 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 jam, which is wild, sure. which is a wild piece of trivia that I know. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so anyway, that's very cool. Uh, wow. you, you know who 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 wouldn't show up in Dark Sun is is Sahugan, and they are some of sure. my favorite monsters. And I am so excited about the six piece pre painted miniature set from WizKids that is a uh, Sahugan war band uh, filled with pre painted minis. I don't even have to paint these ones. I like painting, but I don't have to paint these ones. And it's, uh, you know, six different sculpts. Uh, really cool looking Sahagan. I like these, the sculpt style mm -hmm. a lot. Um, they look different than the other Sahagan that I've seen. They look a little more substantial, which is not something that I they would do. say about uh, WizKids minis. Typically, they're a little more slender, a little more sleek. These ones look a little more beefy than, than the Sahagan that we've gotten mm -hmm. in previous sets from uh, Dungeons & Dragons. So nice. They're good looking. I like them. Yeah, I do too. Um, I have their, um, I think it was the Goblin War, boy, war yes. Band earlier. Yeah, it's a great set. Like these war bands are, are really cool. I highly recommend them just to, I mean, they're, they're just great character fodder, I suppose. You know, yeah. these are, you want to put this whole group out and you want to write this encounter. <laughs> yeah, no, it just, and it looks, it looks so good whenever you have, you know, a matching set of minis that, that look like they go together, but are all different. Mm -hmm. When you put those on the table in front of PCs and it's just, it's, yeah. it's a fun experience. Cause, Absolutely. Because then you give them names and you're like, oh, okay, uh, shoe hat over there. Where right. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly who you want. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, so much better than just tacking numbers to, to all of them that look the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, if you're going to be getting that war band, you uh, might need a book that hit the Dungeon Masters Guild uh, just a couple days ago called Underwater Campaigns. Oh. Um, I know, right? I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, that's not very exciting. Wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> um, Underwater is really kind of hard, and I love it that they, they've added a lot of different rules for not just, okay, if you swing an axe, you get disadvantage, right? That's about all there is. But, uh, but a ton of different rules for combat, for skills, how they work, how your feats work, how magic works specifically. Um, very, very cool. Uh, well, I know how underwater Adventure... Work. Well, do they? Do they all work the same? I, I know how underwater? my feats works. Yeah. Well, you know, with my feats, I usually paddle. I just paddle a little bit underwater, and that, that just propels me. Sure, sure. Piece of cake. Done. Um, Entire easy. chapter That's... written. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of information in here that's really cool. They've done a really good job of of building a book that will give you all sorts of things that you might need, not just like 68 random underwater encounters, uh, adventure seeds for every level, but a lot of information about what you might find um, underwater. Like, are you down on the seafloor? Cool. Here's a couple things you might discover down oh, here. Here's cool. a table for shipwrecks that you might, uh, might encounter down here. Um, 35 underwater spells, 19 underwater magic items, um, and uh, 26 new aquatic NPCs. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in here that is really interesting, I think, for you as a game master who is preparing to run an underwater game. I, I, that would be a lot of fun to run an underwater campaign, mm -hmm. uh, like completely underwater. And then, but you, you would need a good way of dealing with three, you know, uh, uh, three dimensions, right? Right. Um, 
Yeah, that could be a ton of fun where everyone plays like, uh, you know, Genasi or, 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 or Titans or, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of underwater breathing character. That'd be fun. I'm into that. It would be. I'm into it would weird be a lot of fun. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so cool. Pick that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, coming out of the ocean and going to the dirty streets of Montreal, we have <laughs> that. Vam vampire are there any montreal people here no, no, I just, no that's not the first thing i think about when i think about montreal i guess I it's mean, really yeah it's really not I, not the first thing i think of but apparently they have a dark and seedy underbelly oh at least well, in this okay. game vampire the masquerade chapters the story-based cooperative game from montreal-based flyos games uh mm -hmm. I am assuming that it's taking place in Montreal because it says Montreal on the box. <laughs> not, we're not saying that's where it's produced. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> this game is going to include a 140-page storybook, 40 dialogue booklets, uh, 100, uh, or 870 cards, 100 NPC standees with plastic bases, 15 dice, 40 scenario tiles, over 200 tokens, 37 tracking cubes, eight plastic minis, eight character boards, a sand timer, and a red filter mystery reader. Ooh, and a oh. status tracker, and a pad of character sheets, and 10 <laughs> sealed envelopes with additional material. <sighs> wow. Okay. So a huge legacy style campaign. That's great. It I love is. It. Oh, my goodness. Um, there is so much stuff in here. Um, it was I'll a say that I, Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it, yeah, it was a Kickstarter. It funded, uh, and yeah, so it's it's expected to be out in uh, Q1 of 2022. I will oh. probably buy this. That, I mean, awesome. I like Vampire the Masquerade, and I like the idea of all of this. So I'm in. Yeah. I'm ready. I do like that the character sheets on there, I took a quick look, like they've got the five dots, you know, mm -hmm. they're they're... It's what you expect if you like Vampire the Masquerade. They didn't, you know, totally just tabletop this away from, from yeah. the role-playing experience. So it's right. very cool. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. It's, it should be a ton of fun. Wow. Wow. Well, I think my last one here, my last bit of news is, is again, a callback to an older idea that we haven't seen around in a little bit. Um, it is a, a Kickstarter right now for Codex of the Mind, a complete psionics system for 5th Ed. Um, we've seen Wizards of the Coast like approach psionics and back off quickly yeah. uh, here in 5th edition. <laughs> uh, I, at this point, I don't think they're going to come out with psionics. No. I think I think we'll see sixth edition before psionics. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of think so. I think we've got as much psionics as we're going to get. Yeah. So if you do enjoy psionics, if you want that sort of thing, you're going to have to find um, some sort of third party group. Um, and uh, this one is by the folks at Paradigm Concepts, uh, specifically based for Arcanus, uh, that campaign setting, but mm -hmm. it could easily be trans to any fit that game you wanted. Um, there's a whole preview on here and three new base classes, kind of the Scion, the Psy Warrior, and the Wilder, which I believe are the same three we had in third ed from the get-go. Mm, um, I believe, I don't know, I skipped it. I, I can name them for second ed, but. Okay. <laughs> um, but a lot of different new class options, a whole bunch of subclasses, like 50, adding a lot of different psionic flavor to lots of the different classes that we know. Like all the stuff that you need, um, just all of it. Just all it. of it. So if you Sweet. want it, get it because it's right here. Uh, and this is going to be kind of your chance. Like I said, I, I don't think WotC is going to do psionics. Yeah. At all. I, I th yeah. <laughs> no, I think we would have seen more play tests if they were going to. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it's just every single time, you know, the psionics came out in second edition and people get up in arms, comes out in third edition, people up in arms, right? It's just, it's a weird, strange argument waiting to happen. Like, why yeah. not just skip it? <laughs> they did it great in fourth edition, but you know, the, the fourth edition design principles meant adding classes was easy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So and now it is not, which no. is too bad because I want more charisma saves in the game. And this would be a great way to do it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Oh man. All right. Well, um, so at this point in time, uh, are we ready to move on to our next segment? You think? I think so. I'm yes. Do you want, so excited do, do, about do, this. do you want to introduce this new special segment before we swap on? Yes. Our All yes. Right. <laughs> uh, we're doing a little bit of game time today. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, back 
in February of this year, it was uh, zine quest time on Kickstarter. And, uh, and a lot of those zines are just coming out right now. Um, so from the, the wildly intriguing ideas to the final product, um, now what six seven months later uh, i'm very excited and this is one that just hits this week actually um this is by matt sanders of the sealed library and it's a game called we sail beyond um it is a collaborative map building game and kind of the intent for a lot of these games we talked about bucket of bolts i think that was a game where all of you work together to create the story of your spaceship that you're going to play mm -hmm. in i don't know starfinder or whatever um this game is kind of meant for almost like a session zero. Like you sit down and the, the main idea is that the players are kind of, they are in a tavern or they're, they're somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. They are talking to someone, they're learning information about the area and using it to create a map. Is that map perfect? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, the GM's map may end up being quite different uh, in some important ways. Um, but it's got like this collaborative aspect of gaining rumors, deciding what the, the landscape looks like, uh, and building it all out uh, using a hex grid, which is what we'll also be taking a look at today um, as we play this, because you are going to play. <laughs> I'm going to play in the audience. You are the player. Is, audience is also players, so they're going to be oh, playing yeah, on my team. Yeah. And Rich, you're going to be running this. You're going to run us it. I, so, I shall be the GM. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we set sail. I have the title page up. I'm ready to go. Yeah. How should we start? First of all, Look at this design. I mean, this this is it's it's intense. What you're going to yeah. see here is is very intense uh, design. Um, well, uh, if you want to go ahead and, and hop over to a hex kit real quick, just to show oh. part two. Yeah. Um, if that's easy, um, we're going to use this uh, this tool. This is called hex kit, and it's uh, recommended by uh, Matt Sanders there. And how you play, we sail beyond. Um, this is both of these are available on itch. Uh, itch.io. Um, this one is by Cone of Negative Energy called Hex Kit. And this is going to be the size of the map. I don't know if we're going to create this entire map today or not, but we'll keep it pretty small um, just so we have a, you know, a reasonable map. We're not going to fill out some huge, I don't know, epic 20 by 20 sort of thing. No. Um, all right. So by the end of this, hopefully, we're going to be adding some tiles to this to create a general region map. For maps like this, I, I like hexes. I mean, I'm not... I'm not an old enough player that I want hex maps for everything in the world. I mean, I, no. I played not enough Battletech to care. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. But uh, but traditionally, I've seen a lot of hex maps be used for like large regional world maps mm -hmm. and things like that. So this fits. This is good. Yeah, I think it's good. They're they're good for for keeping track of travel, right? Right. Yeah. It's it's nice to be able to say I want to go to this hex and see what's going on, right? And that's kind of what we're up to here. Thank you, DJ Regular, for posting that in the chat. Yeah, that's the game we are playing right now. Um, let's jump back. Let's jump back. Are you ready? Uh, oh, oh, are we jumping back to the, uh, the to the book? To the book. All right. Um, so to play this game, all you need um, that we're using the mapping software rather than doing this on paper, but you could totally do that. Uh, you don't need to use a hex grid. You could just draw on a piece of paper uh, if you wanted to. Um, you need a D6 to play. So uh -huh. uh, I've got that. Uh, I'll need one and you'll need one as well. You can I've, choose or do random, kind of up to you. I have Mr. Google. Excellent. Um, you need a pen or a pencil, but we've got the, the we'll, we'll be making some notes, I think, as we go through as well, that tell us a little bit about this map that we are creating. Mm -hmm. um, optional artification tools, things like um, old, I don't know, T, um, to dump this piece of paper in to make it look authentic and ancient. Um, okay. You know, we're, we're going to skip that part, but uh, that is all recommended in the game rules. <laughs> um, and this is the start. All right. It all started in a tavern. The first thing we need to do is decide where we are um, and, uh, and what exactly we are up to. So. All right. Uh, we're in Montreal. We, this whole game is... We're in Montreal <laughs> and we're hunting the Sabbat. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. we're uh, we're we're headhunters from uh, the uh, the uh, the Cam uh, Camilla, Camarilla, yes. and we are we are trying to find some Sabat Sabat who have come into Montreal to cause trouble. Well, now I'm terrified. Perfect. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. Um, you can It'll see over on the left. Kind of... Oh well, I like. Yeah. Okay. 
This is good because we're going to, I mean, there's going to be some wilderness aspect to this. So maybe this is one where we got to head out a little bit, but we yeah. may see Montreal on our map. I mean, that'll mm -hmm. be easy. Yeah. Um, uh, so where exactly are we going? We're, we're going to start this uh, investigation in a tavern. Uh, what mm -hmm. is the name of that tavern? Uh, we've got the table on the left. You can roll a D6 or um, we're we rolling pick a D6. something. Okay. Uh, five. A uh, number five. Uh, of course. Uh, the tavern called the Ogre's Lament, the mm. famous yeah. tavern. Um, just, just on the outer edges of Montreal next to the Montreal uh, uh, forest. I mean, I feel like this is the a game municipal cafe, right? This is, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's a game cafe. Okay, okay. I like it. Um, and I'm going to jump to here real quick. All right, as you prepare to embark too, right? We're, we're trying to plan out exactly where we are headed with this map. What is this map for exactly, right? Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and roll another D6. Let's see. And let's see if we can turn this into our Camarilla style adventure. Four. Give me another D6. Four. All right, so we're preparing to embark to, okay, a lost continent that recently reappeared from beneath the waves. Oh, How wow. in the world did uh, the Sabbat raise a continent um, in the Arctic Circle north of Montreal? Right, yeah. <laughs> How did the Sabbat raise <laughs> an island in the... Uh-oh. Uh I mean, it could certainly be um you know we do something over in the atlantic or something in the the middle of the arctic circle boom all right i love it right all right um so perfect all right we've already got our wacky wild start here um but we also need to um we heard a rumor about this place oh did we yeah did we already one rumor sounds like a d6 is needed to be rolled let's get a another one. d6 we got a one? Yeah, we got a one. All right. So, I mean, classic uh, vampire story. Of course, we've heard that uh, that not only is this a strange island, but there have been reports of foul beasts with two heads and fangs like daggers, um, which we, we might want to prepare for. And fangs like daggers. I love it. All right. All right. Perfect. So that is kind of the start to this story, um, this little bit of game. Uh, and we're going to be exploring this, basically this uh, lost continent. Um, All right. Not going to be very big. Let's say island. Um, we are going to go through this process of map generation. This is kind of what page, uh, the, the, the right side page is talking about here. Um, you're going to be creating this. You as players have little to no idea how true these outcomes are going to be. The GM is going to be potentially changing this map a little bit. We're talking about how some of the threats are maybe worse than you think or not as bad as you think, things like that. Um, the stages of play are, are just a little bit of back and forth, and we'll kind of do all of them together. Um, PCs are going to add a biome to the map. Um, I'm going to do some stuff with the GM map as well, which I'm kind of drawing over here on a piece of paper. Um, we're going to, you will be embellishing its features uh, and I'll be determining uh, actually how big is it exactly? What's the true size of this sort of thing? Um, and then adding some quests and then determining how true those quests might be. All um, right. So you'll have some some ideas about what's going on in this, I, this island, right? And we're building them together. Uh, and my side is just like, how true are those going to be? Right? Are they going to be exactly, or do I need to change them a whole lot? Yeah. Um, which I'm kind of excited by. Yeah. Uh, all right. Are you ready? Next page. Let's go to the next page. This is a big one. This is a two-page spread, all for the players here. Um, adding a biome to the map. Uh, oh, first all right. of all, if you, you look over the top right. Biomes come in a number of shapes. Um, when you add a biome, you're going to roll a d6 to create one of those shapes. Um, it's possible that's how big it is. And we're going to add uh, something, you know, some grassland in one of those shapes to a map. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to start kind of in the middle of the map, and we're going to go outwards from there. Okay. Um, well, right. let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull out the map, and we'll, we'll start looking at that a little bit. Boom. All right. So you've There's got the map. Um, <laughs> I'm flipping no back way. before and forth between a couple things myself. Oh. Um, well, first of all, go ahead and roll a D6. Let's find out what kind of a biome this is. All right. Uh, let's go with a, you know, a very strong one. Wow, I'm good right. at rolling ones. So the middle of this, uh, this little continent here, this little island, is going to be an aquatic biome. So there's some sort of lake in the middle okay. uh, of some kind. All right. uh, go ahead and roll a, D roll a D6. Again, all roll right. Again. Sweet. 
Uh, let's go with a uh, six. <laughs> okay, it is massive. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be three hex chunks large, which is not single hexes, uh, but these hex chunks. So maybe this is like going to extend all the way out. Maybe we're going to get some like sort of banana shaped island here or something like that. Um, um, all right. Let's see. So let's take a look. Uh, so a hex chunk. Is those shapes up at the top, right? Yeah. So they're, they're basically four. Okay. Four yeah. hexes. And except ours is going to be more like. Well, 12. <laughs> um, what shape should it be? Oh, man. I, uh, well, I mean, it looks like there's six variations there. It seems like I should You're just roll a d6. A d6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Uh, it's a one. All right. So a cluster of three kind of in the middle of the map. All right. So, uh, all right. Let's go. Let's go look at the map and let's see how to use this. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get close that. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll pop on over here. And so, all right, so I have the paintbrush selected. Yes. Uh, cliffs, coasts, uh, forest. We're gonna we're gonna keep scrolling down because there is just some. Uh, oh. I guess we could do coast if we wanted to. Oh wait, there's um, the ocean. There is ocean, and there is. Let's well, let's. I think we're doing ocean, right? So okay, we can put some coast around that. Right. All right. So Sounds that's good. That's one of our six. So I need to do that's six one. Of these. So I've got to do two more of these. Yeah. That's two. And then, so do you want to kind of connect it up to the top? Do you think, or is this like, or is it three? There we go. There we go. All right. All right. So, so this this ocean, this kind of inland ocean that we've got right here, has yeah. now changed the shape uh, pretty dramatically. Yeah. Um, but it, it can't just be there, right? Uh, all on its own, right? It's got to have a reason for being there, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and give me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, we said aquatic. Um, is this aquatic region? Um, island has come up. Uh, we need a keyword for it. We kind of had to choose one of three. Okay. Um, and the options they're giving us are serene, heavenly, or idyllic. My goodness. Heavenly, clearly. Heavenly. So uh, so this wonderful heavenly ocean uh, in the middle of it, it must be, uh, I, I don't know, is this uh, like a fountain of youth style zone? Uh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Um, what we need is kind of a quick description, almost an anecdote, like kind of a, a narration about uh, what you've heard about, excuse me, uh, this little heavenly ocean section in the middle of this map. Okay. And anyone in the chat, if you've got ideas for that, feel free. I heard uh, the water is always warm. Uh, and the octopus uh, will <laughs> tickle your feet. That's what I've heard. Excellent. I like that. Yeah. Um, of kind of a pleasant place to be. Okay. So uh, while you're off there, you know, having to deal with the <laughs> dealing with the Sabbat, right? Yeah. Uh, you'll have this nice like respite in the middle as long as you can get there. Yeah. Great. Um, I love it. Perfect. Nice work. Um, so that is the first biome on the map. Um, All right. And so that means it is now my turn. Oh. All right. So this uh, I could do publicly or I could do this in secret, but let's just do it publicly because it's way more fun. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, going to roll 2d6. I have a second rumor for the Heavenly Ocean, by the way. Uh, Levi Moat um, heard, uh, heard there was a, a divine immortal creature living there. Some kind of creature. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Well, so it sounds like you've got, you know, quite a bit of information about this zone already. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to tell you that uh, I, I took a look at the, the GM section and I, the first thing I did is rolled a six. So oh. uh, first of all, it's like beyond your while. When you get there, right? When you get to this zone, um, you you might think, uh, you know, they're saying all these rumors. They're saying the water's warm. The octopus tickles your feet. No, no, no. Like you get there and the war the water is exactly the temperature you're looking for, right? Oh. Um, and that octopus uh, tickles your feet so nicely, so carefully. Um, 
right? It's just this this perfect sort of place. Uh, heavenly is is the best word for it because it is just like this is you're in heaven. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, well, great. I that's, could have rolled a one. <laughs> that's 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 probably why why the Sabbat want to take over this area is because right? this is where 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 they. Uh, the the Camarilla send their tremier to 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 relax before uh, digging into their mystic tomes. Absolutely, um, I love this um, this first D six set because it's basically how close to player expectations is the zone actually. Yeah. Um, on a four, the way you described it is exactly how it is. On a one. <laughs> Oh no, you were totally wrong. Yeah. Um, you thought it was going to be wonderful and it's just going to be this nightmare zone. Um, I like worse than hoped on here as well. That's just <laughs> making me laugh. Um, let's see. Um, and, ooh, I got to roll a second D6. Oh, uh, actually, no, I take that back. Um, do, 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 do. Actually, everything is fine here. Um, oh, okay, great. It's all good. We're all good here. Yeah, everyone's fine. Um, I think everything is fine. Um, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go over here, roll in this one. Um, as you get there, uh, and again, we have your map that you're creating, which mm -hmm. is kind of like the treasure map you're getting from these folks in in the Ogre's Lament who are just like giving you all the good yeah. information. Um, meanwhile, on the DM's dice over on my side, I've actually rolled um, that your information was incorrect. And this this ocean, this huge ocean inlet, when you actually get to it, is just going to be a much smaller zone. Actually, only a couple hexes large. <laughs> All right. Which leaves us with a couple zones of total mystery, right? Right. Um, you have... You have all this region that you think is just an ocean on your map, and you're going to get there, and there's going to be something else, something unexpected, uh, which I am very excited about. Ooh, something um, unexpected is coming. Something unexpected. Um, I could also add in, there's a section on here, a D6 for effects, right? Things that maybe that you will... Uh, you know, feel when you're in this place. And I would say that the way that you've described it, I'm not going to even roll on this. Um, when you are in this ocean zone, you feel these feelings of well-being, recovery, replenishment. Um, those are kind of the main aspects to this, uh, this wonderful ocean you nice. found. Love nice. it. Nice. All right. Um, next page. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Uh, next page. So let's pop this open. We're at the GM page. So after that, the flora and fauna. Right? I mean, there's all sorts of creatures. We've got this one um, divine immortal being, of course, but there's going to be other beings that live in this region. Uh, the question is, uh, what are they like? Um, go ahead and roll another d6 for me. You got it. Uh, for this roll, I am going to roll a four. A four. Okay. So is, you have two choices here. Uh -huh. You can decide on your own. The flora and fauna in this place are unexpectedly delicious or unexpectedly furtive. Uh, I'm going to go furtive. Right? Yeah, because so I'm a vampire, so why why would I care about delicious things? I mean, absolutely, right? So every time you get into the water, except for the, the octopus who is trained to come and tickle everybody's feet, and maybe this immortal being who might come and say hello every once in a while, I am already imagining it like the narwhal in Elf. Just, <laughs> just emerging, hi, buddy, <laughs> and then going away. Um, uh, all the other creatures, all the fish that live in this ocean, any other beings, uh, any crabs, any, you know, um, every time they see you coming, they scuttle away. They swim off into the distance. Um, you can just barely catch glimpses of them. Okay. Well, that will make uh, hanging out with the immortal creature uh, living in the sea a little bit more difficult. Absolutely. Right? Now, um, we, we've done a bit with this little biome, this ocean that we've got here. Yeah. Uh, but there is certainly more to do. Oh, um, let's pop let's so, pop open our PDF again. What do we got on. next? All right. So the next thing is is a player phase to create the story of the biome. We just want right. to know a little bit more about it, like an anecdote um, or, okay. or something going on here. So um, this is something that we could totally just do, right? One of the players uh, could, could look around and say, well, this is my biome. It's the ocean, right? Um, I want there to be this thing here. I want there to be like, you know, uh, a temple ruins way down deep or something. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's a, it's mysterious. You know, it's got this this uh, specific deity in charge. Um, if we need prompts, there are uh, three tables here for a location, oh. an event, and a theme. Well, let's 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 use the table. Tables are fun. Uh, they are. <laughs> so let's start with location. We already have a little bit of information about this location, but what does two tell us? Two tells us there is a building. Now, not a settlement, not a monument, but a building of some kind here. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Let's let's do two more to, to define that a little bit more. Okay. Before we start diving into ideas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, so uh, our next one is going to be a two again. Okay. So uh, a building somehow tied to exploration. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see here. A building of some kind tied to exploration. Right. And uh, let's see here. What and is the last one is about a theme. Oh, yeah. Well, let's figure out this theme. Uh, I'm going to go with a strong one. Oh, OK. So uh, the theme here is welcome. So so maybe this is a very welcoming location. Uh, yeah. I, is welcoming mean like a public library? I don't know. Um, maybe, there's a building here. Oh, maybe, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> maybe it's one of those, you know, one of those outlooks that you go and you can stick quarters in the, the machine and you can kind of like look through it like binoculars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, there is a, a building that has those sorts of things just somewhere here on, on like the coastline or is it up on like a cliff top? Uh, it's on the coastline. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. All right. So so a way to kind of look out at uh, the entire ocean. Probably a, really good. It'll let you see those creatures that are swimming too far away to actually get to. A scenic lookout with a uh, always <laughs> stocked coffee machine. Nice. Boom. Um, I, I just saw the chat, uh, Levi. The immortal creature is a narwhal with an ancient ruins on its back. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's why we couldn't find Atlantis. It kept swimming around on the back of a narwhal. All right. Well, that sounds lovely. Uh, so wonderful. So nice. And now I get to roll a d6. Oh, and I have rolled a one. Ooh. That means that when we talk about the truth of this location that you're excited to go see someday, right? You've heard about this place. Uh, it's got all the free coffee in the world. Yeah. Um, that tale is 100% out of date. Um, since then, things have aged or crumbled or died or been usurped. I mean, paths have shifted. Um, so maybe actually when you go looking for this place, uh, you know, it is kind of a, a swampy area at this point, right? The entire platform, the entire building has like fallen in and been like covered up. And so now it's, you need to excavate it to find anything or, or maybe when you get there, it's completely taken over, right? Someone else has discovered this free coffee. Yeah. And uh, and now, like, there's a, I don't know, a group of trolls that have just torn this place apart. Um, are there trolls? Yes. In the White Wolf world? Okay. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Bunch of werewolves. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Trolls and stuff. Great. Um, it's just a messy swamp area that's covered with trolls and stuff. Right. But you don't know that. And so you're kind of excited. You know, yeah. honestly, that sounded like a pretty great place. What a good place to go meet this narwhal. Exactly. Um, and you. You've got your notes about that. It's kind of interior, so you're, it's going to take some time to get to that hex. And when you get there, I know it's all going to fall apart. I've already got adventure seeds ready to go. Fantastic. Um, uh, from there, <laughs> yeah, the game moves on to uh, to adding some quests. And these are not going to fit our storyline perfectly. This is fairly fantasy, although um, <laughs> since we're dealing with vampires, I mean, I'm sure we yeah. can change them a little bit. Yeah. Um, because the best tavern tales don't just tell what someone did while they were there. Uh, they tell us why we want to go there. All right. Um, so brand new adventures, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if we're playing this with multiple people, uh, player A, who is kind of on right now, takes the role of telling another tavern story in the same place. Could continue one of the earlier tales that we'd kind of come up with, like the tale of this narwhal or something else. Um, or yeah. someone else who's, who's had some ideas along the way. Yeah, but here's the thing is, is I heard this whole other tale. Uh, and yeah. It, and it takes place with four. Is Ooh. the place. A temple? It really? It takes place in a temple <laughs> of, uh, you know, of, uh, of five. Of the undying kings. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, this it's over in the five. Over in the five. Uh, wailing ghosts hold ancient spells. Oh man. Holy okay, okay. So now 
now we're in the plot of Blade 3. Is that what's going on right now? <laughs> I kind of think so, right? <laughs> so this this island has risen up from the depths. Uh, cool. There's a narwhal there. The water's really warm. There's this awesome building that eh, it's a little scary. Um, but you know that there has been this quest. There is this ancient temple where probably one of the ancient vampire kings lives. Yeah. Or maybe maybe a Belmont. Maybe someone who hates vampires. Right. Uh, we don't know. You know. Oh man. More stuff we could decide on. Yeah. All right. Here, let's do this. Boop. All right. So uh, let's see here. So there is a temple to the undead king. Oh, and I forgot what my last part was. Uh, uh, wailing ghosts hold ancient spells. And wailing ghosts clearly protect the booty inside. Right. I, undying kings. Very, very vampire. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think we did it. I think we found our uh, our vampire connection. Right. This is a mechanic that I really like about this game. At this point, say that it's, it's the GM and four players, right? The players are then supposed to go around the table embellishing this quest even more, right? Um, not just from that basic beginning, but maybe one of them is, is really into like, oh, okay, but not just ancient spells, but like this super powerful spell that, uh, that uh, the, the spell that sunk the island in the first place and, and or the, the spell that summoned the narwhal and oh, someone wow. else has to come up with like a new embellishment, right? I mean, because this is, this is the story that you hear in the tavern and it's kind of like, you know, the person telling you and then the four drunk people around who were like, wait a second, I heard something about that. <laughs> and it just builds and builds. And again, like it's, the whole point is to get you motivated to someday go to this place and see what's actually out there. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, as Levi said in the chat so gracefully, I heard someday we'd find it. The vampire connection, bloodsuckers and stalkers and me. <laughs> out here on this scary coastline. I love it. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh, all right. Oh wow. Well, so what's what's so so we've embellished. Ooh. We've talked about like the the razor sharp winged flying fish in the area, and uh -huh. uh, the uh, the random dust devils that pop up here and there, and mm -hmm. the flaming tornadoes. So we've embellished this area. Uh, what's Absolutely. Next? Well, over on the right, here's the deal is, um, you know, you heard about this quest um, from a bunch of people at this tavern. And then, you know, someday you'll actually get here. Right. And yeah. uh, I, I just I I really like this die <laughs> <laughs> um, on a six. Oh, dear. What you what you heard barely scratched the surface. Uh, the loot is a lie. Traps are lethal and hidden enchantments that'll blow you into another dimension like this. You're going to get here and this is not going to be some, some, you know, Oh, I just have to deal with some wailing ghosts and we'll get some cool spells or something. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh man. It's going to be a disaster area. You know, we, with a six, I mean, if, uh, if you show, I mean, if we wanted to go like old school, right? So this, this is something like you show up, you step through the doorway and, oh, sorry, the tomb of what? Horrors? Um, oh, oh, ooh, right. oh, what? Okay. okay. <laughs> right. Uh, which I like a lot. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it, yeah, that's, that's really wild. And I'm, I'm noticing that our, that our heavenly lake is surrounded by the most awful things ever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Um, and so, okay, so all right, so with this scary, scary temple, uh, that's going to be a huge deal um, when you actually get there. You might have to back away and come back when you gain a couple levels. And from there, the next page starts with repeat until complete, right? Um, this process is something that you can kind of do over and over again, um, detailing more and more of this area. Um, I think the map we have is, is what, eight by six? Yeah, it's pretty small here. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull that up in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to get to the title page again. That way, whenever I bring it up, it was there. Yeah, so let's take a look. So essentially, this is what we've gotten so far of our map. We've gotten this ocean area on this island in the middle of an ocean um, <laughs> is is what we've decided. So, you know, we can get, we, we can even get fancy and paint some coasts. Like Right. This software is really interesting. I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, they're still working on it, of course, but yeah, you can rotate it by by right clicking on it, or if you click on it, it'll give you a new piece of coastline. Uh, it's all randomized. Um, I think there's twelve or something, but usually you can make a reasonable coast. 
Uh, and again, this, these are just ideas. So when you take this hex and you start actually drawing it onto a piece of paper or something, if you wanted to, uh, look at that matchup on the bottom there. That's very nice. There we go. Yeah, nice. Nice work. There. Perfect. <laughs> Did it. Perfect. Yeah, so there's our coast. Uh, yeah, and if you look mm -hmm. over here, like this is just kind of cool. Like there's there's a bunch of different tiles you can use. You can use cliffs, uh, a con uh, conical forests, uh, dunes. So maybe you know there's some dunes out here, right? Uh, there's forests, grass, hills, icons. Which I mean, maybe this is this is where our outpost is, and this is where our whatever is. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that, right? Uh, yeah. There's some jungle, right? Uh, let's see here. What else we got? We got mountains. We did the ocean. We got palms, river, swamp, and utilities. What's utilities? Oh, okay. Look, like uh, you know, you need a you need just something different for something, right? Just like something roads. different. Yeah. Uh, looked like there was a well. Look, mm -hmm. there there was an X marks the spot. Um, yeah. <laughs> there ahead. are. Uh, I really like that there are ideas in here. We we kind of moved past them for mm -hmm. rivers and roads. Yeah, um, I believe we did. Right, I'm looking for them real quick. Uh, one of their ideas for rivers. Oh, it's farther down. Sorry, um, is like you can do a D six thing, like start at a lake and kind of like move around in a random order. Uh, an alternate method is that somebody just takes another piece of paper and puts it on top of a map, mm -hmm. closes their eyes, and draws a scribble. <laughs> like, <laughs> you you just add that to the map. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, same way, um, kind of depending on the landmarks that you have, there are reasonable places to put roads on here. Um, so you could totally do that. Um, or you could do something and they, they kind of mention in here, um, write the names and hex numbers of some of your landmarks, um, fold them up, like mix them all up, take two of them and join those by a road um, and stuff like that and decide if it's going to go through the mountains or build a bridge across the water uh, or whether it's going to go around, things like that. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. So we, we have our little area with uh, the uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright house over here. Uh, we have our temple over here. Uh, this is where the um, uh, desert turns into jungle. Um, sure. Yeah. And this is our heavenly ocean. So this is this is where our our, our next adventure, our next chunk of our campaign is going to take place. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm excited. And if we wanted to. We could go in and again, like that area of Dune seems like a reasonable place that we could talk about and we could define just like we've done here with a different rumor and a different story that we mm -hmm. learn here in this tavern. Um, the other thing that we can do, um, and this is this is the last bit, um, I think, to go to the PDF, of course. Um, there is a page, it's page 24, and it's called Finish the GM Map. All right. Well, it's <laughs> going to take me a second to get through to there. Uh, You're all right. Fortunately, I'm going two pages at a time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> spreads are beautiful. This book is ridiculous. I love it. Yeah. So here, um, here we next... go. Talking a little bit about like the, putting the compass rose on here, uh, some things mm -hmm. like that. Now, all right, here we go. Finishing up the map. So this whole section is is just like the way that you've created this, right? You decided that ocean was going to be those nine spots, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I went in and saw that actually that's much smaller. There's only um, I think uh, six. There's there's three that are blank now. And on your map, you're not going to fill those in because okay. there's no reason to. You yeah. wouldn't know. Right? I wouldn't know. And so there needs to be a way for the GM to be like, well, what's in this spot? Mm -hmm. um, you know, just some interesting things you might find. So I might, you know, roll on the same table and say, that, oh, that's like some grasslands. Okay. But it is an inhabited area. And I could use this table to figure out exactly what it is. It's an inhabited area. Um, and with my other D6, maybe there's a stone tower there and some people that live inside. So you go over there expecting to see the ocean starting and you see this tall tower. Um, maybe you want to go in and investigate and find out what the heck is going on, right? Good source of rumors. Um, could instead be this, uh, this great migration, just this massive herd of, um, I, I don't know what, what shows up on an Island like this. Um, Antelope. a bunch of polar bears that were polar swimming bears. by and yeah. <laughs> they're Penguins. migrating past. Yeah, penguins would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this um, is great. It could be I, weirder stuff. I, yeah. I, I, li I like like the sword in the stone is in this mm -hmm. here. A lost horse. <laughs> That's right. so good. 
And the whole thing is it's it's all prompts, right? It's all yeah. narrative prompts. So if you get that and you're like, I don't like that, you could roll again. But a lot of these are just gateways to a mildly different story, right? A fresh mm -hmm. campsite um, is what, 4-3 on yeah. here? Yeah. Why is there a fresh campsite there? I mean, that's immediately like, are, are you getting ambushed right now? You know, did some people actually just get, you know, kidnapped and you need to follow tracks or something? There's all sorts of stuff you could do <laughs> from this very, very small little prompts. <laughs> Why is that pair of smoking boots in the middle of this hex? <laughs> is it? Oh, gosh. Is it Oblivion? It might be. Did you ever play Oblivion? I did. I, I did. I did. I played 10 minutes and I was like, oh, God, this game sucks. And I put it down. <laughs> Okay, that was right before Skyrim, right? Yeah. It was, I can't remember. Um, there was There's a moment, I think it's in that game, where you were kind of walking around, um, and you cross over this hill, and you hear a scream, and someone falls from the sky and crashes into the ground, uh, immediately dead. Um, and you go, and I think you find their, their shoes, and their shoes were supposed to be like shoes of flying or something like that, and clearly uh, they're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the follow, David Daughtry. The dark moment. Oh, nice. Um, so um, that is We Sail Beyond. I mean, uh, more yeah. and more steps to make that map go bigger. I mean, easily, that's a session that could go uh, hours, right? Yeah. So just building this weird map together, um, coming up with stories about it. Um, from a player side, awesome. You get to yeah. collaborate. You get to build this thing. You get to decide what's going on. And from a GM standpoint, like I didn't have to come up with any adventures there. That's awesome. I already know we're going to this temple and it's going to be super hard. I know we're meeting this narwhal. Um, we're going to have a battle in this coffee stand and uh, observation booth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you know, we just got to get you out to this island and get started. Um, and with the vampire tie-ins, you know, start deciding how that plot is going to activate through this, you know, stuff like that. I just, I just love it. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty simple, elegant game within a game. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, no, it's really, it's really cool. And what, and and you said on itch.io, folks can get this. Um, yes, DJ yeah, regular a link posted the link in the chat just a little bit ago. If I can find it, I'll go ahead and pop it back up there, which I did right there. Uh, nice. Sealedlibrary.itch.io backslash we dash sale dash beyond. Oh, thank you so much, Absolutely. DJ regular. Um, uh, and uh. Does it do any, uh, do, anyway, uh, onward and forward. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So Rich, I think that does it for all the stuff that we have on our notes for the show today. I think it does. I think it so. does. Whew, I was really excited to play that game. That was fantastic. Okay. That was Whew. fun. I'm glad, I'm glad you decided that, that we should try that out today. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I was a little apprehensive. I was like, oh, we're going to do a new thing on the show two weeks in a row. And you're gonna, <laughs> you, you think your new thing is going to be cooler than my new thing? And it was. But who do you think know. you are? <laughs> you did an unboxing. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh. All right. Well, uh, Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. You can follow us on the social medias. We are Owlbear Soup over there. We're also on all of the social medias-ish about that. Uh, we may even have some TikToks coming up soon that Rich doesn't know about yet. It's all just Rich making funny faces. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, make sure and join the Patreon uh, and support the site, uh, like, follow, everything, all that jazz. And Rich... Uh, where can the audience see you in this next coming week? My goodness. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, of course, at Armelina. Um, or I'm trying to think what else. I mean, this this is my last week before the Academy begins. Mm -hmm. So I'll start posting about our, our young heroes and their adventures, I think, um, coming up pretty soon. I try to do that it's near the end of the week, so I'm not giving anything away. And, and, um, and, and, and all the slots are already taken for that? No, nothing left? No, there's still spaces available. Still space? so oh, well, fantastic. Sign up. Ages 11 to 15 out there, head to yeah. academyofadventures.com and sign up, uh, you know, pretty soon because season one starts on uh, on Labor Day. Yeah, I, um, I I tried to sign up and I was rejected. They said I was too old. So that is true. <laughs> I get I get a lot, a lot of emails about opening up camps for adults. Yeah, <laughs> did it last summer and haven't done it since, but we'll see. Uh, and as always, you can find me on Twitch. I am at DJ Pirate Rabbits. I stream every Sunday and Wednesday. I'm not streaming this Wednesday uh, because I'm participating in the blackout. But uh, for everyone else who is, uh, you know, out there, have a great time. But yeah, 
I'm I'm not I'm not participating in a Twitch blackout or I'm I'm participating in Twitch blackout on Wednesday, so you won't see me anywhere on Twitch. But I will be on um, back on uh, random times throughout the week. I think I'm going to do a couple pop ups to kind of supplement that a little bit. So uh, nice. yeah, follow me everywhere on DJ Pirate Rabbits, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. So uh, yeah. you know, um, make sure your crock pots are set to warm and. Uh, <laughs> We will see. We'll see you some other time. The other some other time. Some other time. It's <laughs> yeah. some warm crockpots. I think crock we've been pots? There we go. Crockpots. <laughs> I th- I think uh, I think we've been eighty sixth.